Hi, welcome to our quick video on concrete basics with just some basic ideas that you need to know to better understand concrete mix design. So we again know that concrete basic ingredients are cement and water, sand and gravel, with the sand and gravel often just referred to as our aggregates. Now we will be adding and learning about chemical admixtures that we can add and also mineral admixtures. But right now, the only chemical admixture that we're going to care about is something called air entrainment. And air entrainment literally traps air, little itty bitty 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 air bubbles inside of the wet cement mix so that when the concrete, the mixed concrete hardens, um, you actually are left with these trapped little air bubbles. The reason that we do that is that there's a lot of water that is still sort of trapped inside of our concrete after it hardens, or water can leach up through the ground. And so when you have this water inside of the hardened concrete and you go through a freeze cycle, obviously water wants to expand. If it has no place to go, it will crack the concrete, it can lead to damage, it's pretty severe damage over time. And so having these tiny, tiny microscopic air bubbles all throughout, it gives the water particles somewhere to go during freeze thaw. Also, um, air entrainment is often added even in places like the San Francisco Bay Area, just a small amount because it adds to the workability. And we're going to talk about workability here in just a second. And so um, when the, these ingredients are all mixed, you get something that is definitely very viscous and a liquid. How liquid that is does affect, again, the workability, which we'll get to. Uh, sometimes you're taking this and moving it around a job site in a wheelbarrow. Other times what you'll actually see is when the truck comes out, there'll be a concrete pump with a very long hose and it's a heavy pump um, or a heavy hose, but you're literally pouring the concrete. In this case, the concrete is going into an inverted stem foundation when I lifted the foundation of my house. And so there's a big T on the bottom in the ground. And then what Francisco is standing on there is the stem wall that comes up. So you can see the wood form work and then rebar right in between. And Francisco is walking along. You may have noticed he has a long rod that he's putting in and out of the formwork and that rod is actually vibrating. So that's helping the concrete move down and get all into the bottom of the formwork. It's also um, allowing the concrete to move around the rebar. And that's really important so that you have well compacted uh, concrete to get in the rebar. And you can imagine that the thicker and the drier your whole concrete paste is, the less workable it is, the harder it is to get around in your formwork. Um, and also the larger the aggregate is. Imagine if we had four inch diameter aggregate. Not only would it be hard to put through the hose, the pump, but imagine it fitting between the reinforcing bar and the wood formwork. When we add water to the cement, the dry cement powder, we get an immediate chemical reaction called hydration. Now it does happen over time, um, it, it, it doesn't happen all immediately, but what happens is it does start to change the calcium silicates that are in the cement into something called calcium silicate hydrates, or for short, known as CSH. And this is not a crystal structure, it's an amorphous structure, but basically what happens is you start with these little cement particles and then the CSH gel, if you will, because it's amorphous, starts to grow out of those particles. And the water just continues over time to get inside and, and hydrate every little bit of cement over time. So this is after seven days. It obviously sets within a few hours such that you can walk on it, but it's still strengthening over time. So the CSH gel is what encapsulates all of the aggregate um, and it is what provides the strength of the hardened cement. You will also form calcium hydroxide. It's just a crystal structure. It doesn't really give us much strength. It's a byproduct of the chemical reaction. So um, more on that later in the course, but basics of what's happening. Now, how much water you mix in Obviously, it's going to make your concrete more workable in the wet state, but too much water decreases the strength. So when we look at the plot on the right, we can clearly see that when we have a low water cement ratio like 0.33 versus a high one like 1, we get much lower compressive strength at failure. 
right? So it's going to be stronger if we have a lower water to cement ratio. Now the plot on the right though is showing us obviously as water cement ratio is increasing, the strength is decreasing just like we saw on the right, but when we get to a certain point, we notice this incomplete compaction curve. And what's that saying is when the concrete gets too dry, it becomes non-workable and you can't get it in around the rebar and past the formwork. And so what might that look like? <laughs> Pull off the formwork here and you just have a huge void where you didn't get concrete. This is super extreme. Um, I was replacing the foundation in my house and pulled off the base plates on top of a footing that was in the house and this is what we found. Absolutely terrifying. This has since been corrected. So when we are thinking about concrete mix design, the size of the aggregate matters for workability and also even getting the concrete through a pump if we have to pump it. The water to cement ratio very much matters and of course aggregate, sand, gravel, water, cement, key ingredients, but we'll also learn about other admixtures and specifically we want to start with water entrainment. So here's your prep for looking at concrete mix design. We have another video on actually introducing the mix design process. Thanks for watching.